Welcome to the first installment of the wall unit build series. For quite some time I've been wanting to build a wall unit for the dining room and have decided to tackle it in stages. In this episode we'll kick things off by building the record player cabinet. The rest of the build in later episodes will include a liquor cabinet, shelving, cupboards, drawers and a wine rack. The first thing we have to do is break down the plywood. So here I have 18 mil birch ply and I'm just using a straight edge and circular saw to cut that down to size. For most of the build the depth is consistent so I was able to just repeat most of these cuts, uh, largely cutting each piece of ply into three lengths. And now that the birch has all been cut to width, we now have the uh, spotted gum veneer plier. So this is an 18 mil birch with a veneer glued on both sides. That will form most of the visible faces of the wall unit. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a miter saw, nor do I have a track saw. So I've made a makeshift track saw here just to allow me to cross cut this timber. Here I'm using the table saw to cut the vertical pieces that will fit between the record player shelving. Um, this will create the eight sections where the vinyl will be stored. Now everything was already cut roughly using the circular saw, but now we use the table saw to cut everything to the exact width that it needs to be. And once that's done, I need to make a space for the back panel. This is basically a small um, little notch that sits uh, within the two side panels and the top and the bottom of the cabinet. Now, if this was going to be a bit more of a showpiece and wasn't going to form part of an entire wall unit, um, I would have to make sure that these didn't extend all the way along, um, otherwise they would be visible uh, gaps essentially on the uh, top and the bottom pieces. So here I'm using a handheld router to cut a slot for the sliding doors. There'll be a matching slot uh, on the bottom of the door and also another one on the underside of the shelf on top of the cabinet. These need to line up perfectly and have just enough space for the door plus maybe another millimetre of gap for it to, um, so that it doesn't catch. Now, rather than measuring the location of the dado for the shelf, I'm using the vertical piece that I cut earlier and an off cut that matches the thickness of the shelf to mark the exact location of where the shelf should go. Where possible, it's much better to not measure your woodworking, uh, much better to use reference pieces where possible. Here I have a jig that I've created for the handheld router that I was using. Um, this has a little indicator that shows exactly where the router will start cutting. I can line that up with my knife marks from before and then run the router along the fence and I should have a perfectly aligned dado where the, the shelf will slide into. Thank you. 
As with any build, there is a lot of sanding to do in this project, so we're doing that in stages in varying grits down to 220 uh, grit sandpaper. This is a sheet sander, so it does a random orbital motion uh, just using a third of a sheet of sandpaper. And once everything's nice and sanded, we need to mask any edges that we don't want paint appearing on. Certainly easier to do this than to just try and scrape it off later on. Certainly some will get on there eventually. Uh, we just do our best to try and keep it off so that we have less to clean up later on. The color I've gone with here is a very dark green. Um, I was hoping it would be a little bit darker when I purchased it, but as you'll see later on, it does actually dry a lot darker than how it appears here now. And I just painted everything with a roller. So this is just regular old wall paint. Um, it certainly is a quite a hard wearing one. So it's washable and uh, certainly was one of the more expensive paints that was available. Certainly seems to be doing quite a good job of protecting it. I ended up doing two coats on most of the build. Um, certainly some of it that wasn't going to ultimately be visible. For example, the sides of the cabinet, I left at a single coat. And now it's time to start joining everything together. So here I have the base and I'm going to attach it to the first of two sides. Starting off with a fair amount of wood glue and then uh, basically attaching that with the aid of some right angle guides that I've created. These make it really easy to get everything nice and square before I join it with 18 gauge brad nails and then finally attach some screws in through the base. You'll notice I didn't paint the inside of the bottom shelf. Uh, I didn't want to have paint in the joints. Um, so when I'm attaching those vertical panels later, you'll see that I paint that at the end. Uh, and that's the same with the, the shelf that you see here. Now, I probably should have sanded or done something a little bit different here. This was a very hard process of um, putting that shelf in. Uh, this took me probably about 20 minutes and three blisters to complete, uh, but certainly uh, once it was in, it wasn't going anywhere and it was uh, snug and uh, perfectly, perfectly in there. Next thing to do was to cut the shelf for the amplifier down to size. So this I cut purposefully too wide and then measured it based on the uh, exact width that it needed to be at the end. You'll notice here that I have cut it slightly too big, so it doesn't quite fit. Uh, so here I'm just using a wood plane and I think ultimately a sander to, to get that perfectly in there at the end. Now I'm starting to attach the vertical pieces. Um, this ended up being a lot more confusing and challenging than uh, I first thought it might be. I hadn't really considered how I was going to attach these until this point. So what you'll see here is I'm starting to drill through the top um, where basically I was planning on attaching through the top and the bottom. The issue that I ran into and that I spent many hours thinking about uh, was how do I then attach the ones that are on the shelf above if these uh, sh these vertical pieces are in the way of me being able to attach those. The solution I came up with was to ultimately allow the panels to pivot. So 
by attaching a single screw through the top and the bottom uh, in the same location uh, as far as how far back from say the back um, I was able to then attach each piece from the top and the bottom and then pivot it out of the way to allow me to access the one uh, next to it or above it now luckily with the the ones that were at the bottom I could always screw those in through the base so it was really only a challenge being able to affix uh, the rest of them so I was able to get at least three screws into each vertical piece and that seemed to be more than enough Now the next challenge I had was how do I affix the top uh, of the cabinet. So what I ended up coming up with was these little stretches and they're held on with pocket screws. Um, ultimately I will be screwing in through these into the top. So the top will only be held on with those, however it's not going to be moved around as it's going to be attached to the wall, so I figured that was fine. Now I'm just masking the front of the whole wall unit uh, just to protect those ply faces and now I'm basically going to paint the inside of the shelves. So this was a pretty tedious process and again I did two coats on these. Now as I said before I thought three screws was enough um, but ultimately I ended up putting in a fourth one into the bottom of the cabinet. So ultimately each of the shelves ended up having a four screws. Now I wasn't able to get these screws all the way in, um, so I ended up just grinding the little bit uh, that was sticking out down with a Dremel. This allows me to get the back panel nice and flush to the back of the unit. Now there was a bit of cleaning up to do from some of that paint. I used the Japanese plane here to do some of that. Um, ended up doing a bit of sanding as well, but was very happy with the finish this left. So you'll see I just did a bit of um, sanding using the orbital sander and also did a bit of hand sanding as well. For the finish on the veneer plywood, I used a hard wax oil. So this is a very nice finish, um, generally used on flooring, but leaves a very hard wearing, um, waterproof, waxy, hard surface, and really brings out the, the timber very nicely. So I just apply that using a non-abrasive scouring pad, um, and basically one coat, and then a second coat after, after a day, and that's pretty much it. Now I created this piece of MDF here with some angled holes uh, just to guide the drill through the spaces. This allows me to pre-drill those holes so that they're at the correct angle. Um, this was so that I didn't risk uh, putting them at the wrong angle and accidentally putting the drill and or um, screw through the top when I was affixing it. Um, had a little bit of tear out here and as you'll see later um, that was a little bit visible but as this is inside the cabinet um, through behind the doors and on the underside uh, I didn't end up worrying about that too much. Now it's just a matter of uh, applying some glue to those stretches and also to the, uh, the top of the ply and uh, then I'll be able to affix the top panel.
And now I just do one last sand, and then I'm using a cabinet scraper just to finish off the top, and just applying the hard wax oil once again. Now to make the doors slide nice and smoothly, I've applied a bit of beeswax into the track. Uh, and as you'll see, the doors now uh, will slide very smoothly and without much uh, pressure at all. I had a couple of screw holes that I filled with some wood putty. And here I've just colored the wood putty in using a pencil. Uh, basically, it's now almost invisible. And the last piece of the build is to cut the back panel down to the size. Uh, this is 6mm birch ply and just using the straight edge and circular saw method once again to cut that down to the right size. Once again, some more sanding down to I think only 120 grit at this point. Um, this is never really going to be seen by anyone um, and it's going to be covered by records for the most part. And some more painting. So once again, uh, I believe this was only a single coat. Uh, it won't really be visible for the most part. You'll see me here constantly picking out little bits of the local plants that have landed on the paint. Uh, this was very frustrating uh, to do this in the wind, but certainly uh, I was very happy to get this done because it was the last of a lot of painting. I found it really interesting in watching this video back uh, that you can really see the paint changing colour as it dries and you can almost watch that happen in real time which is uh, like watching paint dry. Now all that's left really is to fix the back panel and that was done simply by putting it in place and then affixing it with the bread nailer. Um, this was a pretty straightforward process and everything went pretty smoothly. I think I missed one nail at one point and I had to knock that back through. 